So with Millstream season around the corner for us and almost at the end, with one main game that we have in mind is the Operation Lion Claw's Gothic Serpent. So, what other way to talk about Millstream games than talk about my own personal Millstream loadout? Let's go ahead and get in the episode. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Airsoft Master. And today we're going to be talking about, like I said, is my personal loadout that I'm going to be using for Operation Lion Claws. Mainly the fact that the game that's coming around in Victorville. Now, let's just go ahead and knock it off the park and say, Mike, what is going to be your main primary? Well, in my role in during, uh, every single Milson game that I have to deal with is a lot of technicals. At the same time, I'll be squad lead. It is, well, you got to have an M203. Mainly the fact that take care of the actual technicals and also the fact that any grenadier will actually take care of the job. This one I will have on my actual rifle is a GNP uh, res system, quick detach. It's the quick detach one that goes onto the res because the barrel one's okay, it's nice, but the fact that what if I wanted to swap out over a vertical foregrip or say for something something goes wrong, I could just easily swap it out and then still use the rifle in service. So that's one thing I will admit for the GNP M203s I really do like in regards of their setups for grenade launchers. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get these anymore because they are discontinued and it's kind of hard to find. But you can always go with like either the Colt style versions of the M203s we do sell on Airsoft Masters, which they swap out from a barrel mount to the actual RIS mount that you can attach to your rail. Now for my rifle. My rifle is basically a G&G Top Tech because again, I've always been the sucker for the pneumatic and electric blowback systems. And I will give credit to this. This rifle, in fact, is about eight years old. And the fact that it still takes a beating to this day. Heck, it really does take a beating because the fact that I would bang the back of the stock to make murder holes. Don't let the staff know, but I digress. As well to that, the actual parts I was in here, I, I did everything you could name of. Gate time MOSFET, actual good compressions with the actual ASGs, as well to that type 4 barrels from Lalax. You name it, it's most likely on here. And as well to that, you'll see is my replica red dot and magnifier that I would use to help with better target acquisitions. And of course, the cherry on top for any other grenadier is your actual M203 sight. Of course, for any other primary and close quarter situations, you have to transition to your secondary. So for my secondary, I have is a Tokyo Marui 4.3 high kappa with a custom DVZ slide that's short stroke and as well as that has a type 4 barrel and a maple leaf bucking to help keep the groupings nice and tight. So I'm able to lob like the same type of ammo I would use is 3.0s or 2A BBs on both of these. And I really don't have to worry about mixing up the BBs and it's still with lob through and make it easier for my accuracy. So now that we already talked about my primary, let's go ahead and talk about my actual gear itself. We'll start off with basically is the, what's on my head. Now you're gonna see is on top is my Team Wendy x helmet that's actually ballistics, where these guys go for 1600. It's very pricey and as well to that, eh, safety's not so good if you actually watch that Oxide video. But I gotta admit the drip is actually pretty good on that self. But if you wanna use a replica, the one thing I can recommend that selling is to actually is the FMA type of replicas of the Team Wendy's, the regular bump helmets. As well to that, if you're looking for something that's more bougie on that side too, you can't go wrong with the PTS m because you still have the m rail systems. But other than that, let's go ahead and go into the helmet that's actually on it. You'll see on, on top of here, I have is the Team Wendy x fill actual helmet covers. It does a pretty nice setup for basically if I wanted to put any other camouflage, like say for example leaves or anything like that. Because this is the stuff that you would see me actually use in my actual military. Like in fact, here's a camera photo right here we'll put up top of the actual photo of what I was using during that time frame. Pretty drippy, but we'll go with that. And as well to that, one thing that you'll need is actual insignias to say, hey, if I'm out there and actually playing at night games, you will need a night indicator. So of course, you would need is that night strobe that I have here, like the Lancer Tactical ones that you can buy. And that one actually helps out when it comes to, say, for example, if you're dead or a friendly is out there out in the open in the night. As well to that, let's go ahead and get into my comms. Now for comm systems, communication is key no matter what into your teammates. So of course, that communication will come in handy, especially for me, and also here in protection, I actually use the T5 and Vizio headsets. Now, this is actually meant for like law enforcement and military as well, but luckily, it's something that we'll talk about later on. Now, if you're looking for something for actual headsets that you would want to use or sell, you can't go wrong with like either uh, replicas like the Earmores out there or even the Z Tacticals that basically able to put into a normal PTT. While this one actually requires a certain special PTT for me to actually use for hearing protection and at the same time connect to my radios. So for my radio basis, I also will be using is, is a Balfang. The Balfang radios is a lot more useful in airsoft community and of course known all throughout. So you can't go wrong with keeping it simple. And as well to that, one thing we know is the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. But let's keep going on from there. 
Now that we already talked about the Kevlar, let's go ahead and get into in depth of my plate care. Now, one in front of you, CLC, is the actual First Spirit MVAD plate care. Now, one reason why I do like that plate here itself is because of the fact that it is so much real estate for anything for such as admin pouches, the triple stack M4 pouches, and then even on the cummerbund itself. Again, it is something that does help out with when it comes to carrying everything that you need on hand and on demand. So it makes it easier for you to keep everything on you at the same time. It's easily accessed by either you or a teammate to help get to either your tourniquet or even their magazines. But other than that, one reason why I do like about the first beer is the fact that it's a laser cut mollies all the way through with a 612 system. And of course, you can't go wrong with actual first beer when you do this. A quick detached cummerbund system to make it easier for you to actually take off when you need to take off your gear. Or the fact that in real situations, the trauma, you're able to get to that person and put it back together as easy as one, two, and three. Just makes it easier for you to actually take care of your business. Now. Of course, admin paperwork, I'll always have my cell phone, my wallet, and my identification is going to be in my admin pouches that you'll see from Condor, as well as I have my triple M4 mag pouches in the front, which I will say, for basically for actual vouching for these guys, these take a beating. I mean, it's been crawled through the ground, it's gone through dirt, sand, you name it, it's, it's gone through it. I mean, you can tell already by the video already that how much of a beating it has gone through, but it still holds up to this day, and then this... This plate here itself is about uh, since 2015. So it take, it's an old girl, but hey, it still withstands the whole thing. And of course, just for realism or that immersion for my groups out there, yes, I am rocking sappies. So it does help that out as well. Now that we talked about the front end and real estate on my plate here, let's go ahead and talk about the actual back end and also the sides. Now my cummerbund on the sides, as you'll see, is I have actually is my my IFAC on one of the right side here, and as well as the left hand side, extra more magazines for either not just me that I can actually still reach onto the left hand, but as well as that for my actual uh, buddy or my other stuff like that that would need more magazines out there on the field. Usually I would rock as the EPM ones for my AEG rifles, which basically is like the actual 200 rounders that you would need, as well as that just in case I always carry like about 15 because the fact that if your buddy needs it, he'll have it right there, as well as that I need it because I'm trigger happy. But Let's go ahead and talk about the actual back end of the actual plate here itself, where I have is my assault pack itself, which actually holds as my hydration source as well, and extra things I would need out there like a bag of BBs, an extra spare of water, and as well to that extra magazines out there, including the gas and shells I would need for my M203. Anything to back it up to help keep myself going to the fight, and just to make sure everybody's still efficient out there since I'm gonna be squad lead out there. A couple features that I do like about the actual first spear ECP path is the fact that for me, I do like is I can actually hold my helmet inside the actual ECP itself. There's extra pouches in here for a plethora of stuff. And as well, it's the nice thing about it is the fact that it still keeps everything still a streamlined compact. The only problem is, is the ECP is $300. But you can always put, because you still have the molly on the back end of the plate here, like any other case strategic flat pack, any other salt packs, that is actually molly ready to go. You can always use something else and to make it more easier. The only reason why I like about this one is the fact to keep it more streamlined and everything nice and thin. Now that we're talking about the back end of the plate here, let's go into my belt because, of course, not everything can be held on the actual plate here, so to make it easier to have on you. So on my actual belt I'm using is the Condor LCS, which is the laser cut system. Again, laser cut does help make it a lot more thinner than you would expect it to be than compared to like regular Molly systems. So let's go ahead and actually get more in depth of it. Other than that, I have actually on here is my Condor pistol pouches on here. I took off those straps because I just want to make everything easy to go. And it still holds on pretty well in regards of my using my high cap of magazines, Glock magazines that I would usually use on pistols. Now, you're wondering why do I have two actual dump pouches? Well, the general purpose of my dump pouch is either, say for example, if I need to put my cell phone again still and just keep it on hand, I can put it in here. But as well to that, another priority is because any spent shells I use for my 40 mics, I can put them in here, reload, and then be ready to go. While my main dump pouch on the back end here is for my actual magazines, and just to make sure I can reload everything on the fly. And lastly, of course, two is one, one is none. I always have a reserve of two extra M4 pouches to the back, just in case if I have my last reserve M4 magazines. Say for example, in a fight, I'm not able to get to my plate here, at least I have two magazines on me, just to keep everything on demand. Lastly, what I use is actually is a Black Hawk Omnivore holster. 
One reason why I like about it is because it's so universal for any other pistols and magazines and everything else that basically I'm just stuck with one holster and I just have to use the same light all over and over again. A lot easier than just swapping out holsters left and right for different pistols. So that does come out as a plus. Now of course we get to the last piece that you would need is when you're carrying a heavy gun it's always best to have an actual real good sling. Now for me I use the London Bridge Tactical Sling 2 point slings itself because of the fact that it helps give me that comfort I would need to carry for long hours all the way through the games. Now unfortunately that the fact that I don't really see the, the slings out there now but you can always go with like a good alternative that I have is I remember using is the actual Cobra 2 point slings from Condor. Those do a really good job and they still have the quick on detached deployment on there for it to actually keep it in carry mode and also switch it to actually like for regular stance aiming mode to make it nice and loose to keep your rifle on you at all times which is again a good safety wise and as well as that ready for the fight no matter what so that's basically going to be my loadout for line claws and other milsim games out there now if you guys have any questions on regards to my gear or the products out there just write a comment below and i'll basically respond as well to that if you're looking for products like these just check it out airsoft masters until then my name is mike and i'll see you guys on the next time this video is brought to you by Airsoft Master.